All right, so hi, I'm Adam. Uh, I'm a glaciologist, and I want to talk to you today about one of the big problems that glaciologists think about. So we all know that ice over the world is melting, but the big question is, how much is going to melt, and when will it melt? So this is a uh, satellite photograph of the Larsen B ice shelf taken in January of 2002. So this is the summer of Antarctica, and so you can see... Uh, lots of melt ponds that have formed on the surface of the ice shelf. And what happens just a few weeks later, in March of 2002, this entire ice shelf, the size of Rhode Island, has disintegrated completely. And it's ejecting icebergs out into the, into the Antarctic, uh, the Southern Ocean. And what's happening, um, once that disintegration happens, the glaciers that fed into that ice shelf, they reacted. And they reacted by retreating, they thinned, and they sped up. And all of those things created an uh, increase in sea level rise um, because of this uh, Larsen B ice shelf disintegration. And so you can see the Larsen B ice shelf is this little red square up there the size of Rhode Island. However, uh, further below uh, the Ross ice shelf and its drainage system drains a much larger portion of Antarctica. The Ross ice shelf is about the size of the country of France. And what, hap what we think is that since it drains such a huge area, and one thing we're worried about is that as the Ross ice shelf Dis potentially disintegrates, it may become unstable and that disintegration may uh, cause collapse of the entire West Antarctic ice sheet and large portions of the East Antarctic ice sheet. So the question is, is what happened to the Larsen B our canary in the coal mine? Is it our warning? Is it, is it what we're saying that, um, are we, do we have to be worried about what happened there might happen at Ross and what does that mean in our future? So we have lots of observations for um, the, the Antarctic ice sheet. So NASA has been doing uh, tremendous work with all of their satellites uh, observing the Earth. And so we have really good information on what, how, what the thickness of this ice shelf is and how it's changing over time. So here's an image of thickness change um, between October 2006 and October 2008 observed from ICESat satellite. And what you can see is that certain places are getting thicker and certain places are getting thinner. And they have some kind of uh, pattern. What we really want to know is, what does that change mean? And how will we know that change when we see it? Will it be disguised? So, <laughs> yeah, so we want to know if we're seeing real change and when we're going to see it. And so the thing is that change, the important change comes in the form of climate change. So if it gets warmer, if the ocean gets warmer, the more ice will melt from the, below the surface of the ice shelf. Uh, you'll cause more melting on the, sur on the upper surface of the ice shelf. But that's just one factor. Glaciers change. They speed up and they slow down over time. And these glaciers that feed the, the Ross ice shelf, when they change in speed, um, they change the thickness of the ice shelf. And those thickness changes last for decades to centuries. And we know about lots of them. We've got stagnation events. Uh, we've got ice, ice planes getting stuck. We've got uh, general slowing events. And we've got things that go back and forth and iceberg calving. There's lots of things that change the ice shelf. So if we want to be able to correctly interpret the observations we make from this ISAT satellite of these thickness changes, and we want to be able to attribute that to what is climate change forcings, so the melting that we see, we have to be able to kind of pull out what's happening from the glaciers as they just speed up and slow down relatively naturally. So we have to get, pull apart the, the forced cycle from the unforced cycle. So how do you do that? Well, what you can do is you can use models to see what is the effect of perturbing a glacier to the ice shelf, okay? So I, here's what I'm doing is I'm just uh, accelerating, deaccelerating one glacier, Berg Glacier, over and over again. And what I can do with this, this model is I can create a single image of what that, that fingerprint of just perturbing Berg Glacier looks like uh, in that thickness field that we can observe from space. So this is the the fingerprint of Berg Glacier and how that affects uh, the thickness field. And we can do this not just for that one Berg Glacier that we know has recently accelerated, but we can do this for every single glacier and ice stream and every single uh, uh, ice rise and iceberg calving event. So we can make these set of fingerprints so that we know that when we see, that when we observe thickness changes from space, that we can use these fingerprints so that we can make sure that we know that we see the, the, the actual forced climate change. So we know that our canary is a true canary, okay? So that's, uh, yeah. 
So when we get back to this, um, we think about uh, how climate change is, is, is affecting sea level rise. Um, and yeah, we're worried about how the Ross Ice Shelf might disintegrate. So yes, thank you very much. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>